Hello, everybody, and welcome to CLX Foundry Live. Today, we are doing something extraordinarily special, and we are live not just on Twitch. We're also live on YouTube right now, so welcome to everybody. We're super excited about this. The first time doing this, so uh, bear with this. Now, of course, uh, we've got, I'm your host, DJ Blue PDX. Of course, joining me right now from our Wichita, Kansas studio, it is our lead technical expert, Paul Steffens, and today's master builder, Hayden Hutchinson. And boys, we have some fun stuff today. So first, we're gonna talk about that beautiful thing behind you, but I would rather introduce our special guest. Joining us today, he's the Director of Marketing for CLX Gaming. It is Easy Tune V. What up, dude? <laughs> yo, 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 what up, guys? Hello. How's it going? Welcome, welcome to the show. We have, uh, we've got, some, we've got a lot of fun we're gonna be having today. First of all, for those of you who have been so diligent about hitting all of our streams and making sure you are grabbing every single code that you could find, that beautiful machine behind the boys right now is gonna be going to one lucky winner today. Not only will you get this extraordinarily well-designed, spooktacular piece of, uh, of machinery, but you'll also get that hand car plushette that's down below and a special package from our partners over at Beacon, and that is a Beacon Mix Create and Brand new Beacon mic. So all of that is going to one of you, and we'll announce that a little later in the show. But first, we definitely need to uh, talk about what we're building out today because today is a real fun one, and we've got some fun things to talk about because Easy was down in L.A. for CitizenCon. So we'll get some questions going for that. If you have questions, of course, about anything you hear, please let us know. We'll answer that as soon as possible. Gentlemen, what are we plugging into this case today? All right, so we've got the white NV5. Love it. From our Horus line here. And going inside of this, we've got our AMD Ryzen 9 7900X for our processor. Uh, to cool that, we've got the new Fantex Glacier 1. This is the D30, so it comes with those fans that we have used before. We really like those ones. We'll get a little bit more into those fans later on in the show. Uh, for our motherboard, we've got the ASRock X670E Pro RS. Uh, for our memory, we've got two sticks of XPG 16 gigabyte DDR5 5200 speed. Uh, it does have the heat spreaders with the RGB on there. For our storage, we've got the ADATA one terabyte 700 gold NVMe M.2 drive. And for our video card, we've got the ASRock Radeon RX 7800 XT uh, 16 gigabyte card. For our fans, we're gonna have eight of those D30 fans I talked about earlier, if I don't drop them all on the floor. And for our power supply, we've got the Fantex 1000 watt, eight, uh, 80 plus gold modular in white. Nice, awesome, well, this is gonna be a fun build. Mm -hmm. Now, these were some of the builds that were down at CitizenCon that we built out that were a lot of fun. Now, anybody who's not familiar with what CitizenCon is, CitizenCon is a giant convention or surrounding Star Citizen and the friends over at Robert Space Industries CIG uh, have been working on all of that. Easy, what what happened down there? Because I, I was just jamming over seeing how many new ships they were putting in. Dude, it was it was pretty epic. Um, so that was my my first that was my first uh, time at Citizen Con. Um, one. You know, if 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 anybody's had an opportunity to kind of attend any event that just surrounds that uh, the game that they enjoy, it's really cool to be around. You know, like-minded individuals and people that are a fan of the same game. But man, some of the cool stuff that they showed it's 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 crazy when you think about <clears throat> how insane the project was, and now everything's kind of coming together, right? Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you, you hit those moments where you're like, oh, I wonder if it's really going to happen. And, you know, when is it going to happen? But now just to see it all come together, you know, um, what was was really awesome. And we had uh, we had 200 computers out there. So that was really cool. That's a, that's incredible. Now, you've been playing this game for quite some time. This is not just like a new thing that you just uncovered. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I started playing 316, I think. Um, been following the project pretty much since the beginning um but i didn't really start playing heavily till till 316 um which was about two years ago gotcha well i'm, I'm gonna be honest ever since i got we were on that sh show with you and we had the community manager from star citizen uh i that was the day i, I bought it like right when we were live oh, on uh, stream <laughs> we had jake jake yeah we go. had jake on on the stream that was yeah, that jake was so great so uh yeah. yeah and then of course i got into it and i've absolutely fallen in love i got a great gift uh from you to be able to buy my 
favorite ship ever, which was super fun. I've done that. Speaking of things that are super fun, let's talk about that super fun little boxy thing that you just put in there. That is our CPU. That is our AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. Paul, can you walk us through that processor? Yeah, so this is the new line from uh, AMD. This is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. Uh, using AMD's multi-threading technology. Uh, for the base speed, it's 4.7, and it will boost up to 5.6. So that is a wicked fast base speed right there. Insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really solid <laughs> processor. Now, speaking of yeah. that, uh, and talk about things we've not talked about on stream before, we haven't actually used this motherboard ever. This is an ASRock X670E Pro RS. So this is a this is a, this is going to be a first time for us. It's similar to some of the other ones that we've had, but this is actually great for so many different reasons. Obviously, you've got Wi-Fi 6E at the top, your Display Port, and your HDMI. We got our four USB 2s. Now that one USB C is a 3.2 by 2. That is 20 gigs up down. You've also got uh, your three USB 3.2 Gen 1s, two USB 3.2 Gen 2s, or two and a half gig internet port, and of course your SPDIF for any type of surround sound you want to make. It's all like that. Love it. Now, speaking of getting things the way that you make them, uh, what have been, what have been some of your favorite ships in Star Citizen? Oh, by far, man. The uh, the to, the best ship in the game will always be the Cutlass Blue. It doesn't change. Um, that will forever be the greatest ship in the game. I don't care if CIG doesn't admit that it's a pirate ship. Um, <laughs> it's a pirate ship. That's uh, funny. It's it's the pirate ship. They won't admit it just because it has police lights. I mean, whatever. I'll I'll keep I'll keep role playing that I'm a pirate that bought it off of a junkyard and kept the police lights on it. However you, you want to look at it, that's that's the best ship in the game. That's awesome. Is that um, the one that we used when we went on our little uh, attack spree when we were doing yeah. missions? Yeah, that was the. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the the Cutlass Blue. I think that's the best ship in the game. Um, yeah. Uh, there's there's other ships. Uh, well, I, I, just, I prefer just to comment the on your pirate, so just give you everybody an idea. So he let me go with him on a on a on a mission night one night, and all I did was man a gun. That was my whole job <laughs> was to just try and shoot things and figure out what I was doing. You were very patient, and I hit some things. So I also hit things many many light years away. I'm sure yeah, it's uh, it's a it's definitely fun. <laughs> Speaking of hitting things into the right spots, uh, we just put in the RAM, and of course, this is two XPG sticks of 16 gig DDR5 5200 RGB RAM, and that is some pretty fast RAM when it comes to, uh, but when it you know when it when it comes down to the, down the line of where we are in the industry when it, that, that standard. Speaking of fast, what's the fastest racing ship you've got, Easy? Racing ship, uh, probably uh razor lx so okay. it's like 1400 meters per second top speed um so it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty fast ship uh it's also right now a really clutch ship because the f8 lightning in the game is a little broken with how fast it is for a fighter so the gotcha. only thing that can keep up with it is a racing ship so i just call it killing them with kindness because you kind of <laughs> stay there and you have these you have two little guns that just sit there and pepper them the whole time but it's faster than they are so it's pretty cool nice all right speaking of things that are cool i'm gonna be honest how we're gonna keep this cpu cool is with this amazing aio uh this is a fantex glacier one d30 360 uh millimeter aio rgb in white which is great now how is this different from the other glacier ones Paul. So this has an upgraded pump or an updated pump. Um, so we've seen a little bit better cooling out of this. This also comes with these D30 fans, which are really nice uh, that connect together. So you can see we've only got two fan wires coming off it, but we've got three fans on the radiator. Um, and we're using those all around. So once we start putting the case fans in, we can kind of show how they connect together and, and all that good stuff. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, those fans are, those fans are, those fans are pretty they're good. They're awesome. I just, the, daisy, like, the daisy chaining is, yeah. is really awesome. Yeah, I it's really so hope smart. it starts to be like yep. an industry standard where they just connect like this. So much easier for cable management. just looks better. And I dig that. I dig that boxy frame, you know, where it's all connected. It's all solid. The game DS uh, ARGBs. 
But those box frames are wild. I just think they, they look great. They look clean. Plus, the blades the, are a little bit different the than frame, others. The framing on the D30s? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. They're really... It. They're, it's it's um, it's um really subtle, the way that they do their RGB, but it's 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 very classy. I like it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we have somebody that says, is that AIO upside down? That, that might bug me. So, uh, explain how this is going to work in that case. All right. So, this AIO is going to mount to the top of the case. So this side that you're seeing right here is what's gonna be actually mounted to the case. So on the other side, we've got our fans here and they're gonna be pushing air through uh, the radiator and out the top of the case. So this is the push method. Uh, if we had them on the other way, we'd be pulling air through. That would be pull, the pull method, so. You know, we've got a lot of people in here who are definitely, uh, definitely Jones in to try and see if they possibly won this amazing PC in the back. And uh, we're excited to tell you that, which we uh, might do in a little bit well we will do yeah, that the, in a little bit don't, don't worry <laughs> the d30s are also really cool because they have the um they have the, the reverse they yeah. they offer the reverse fans right paul yep yep so this stack that i've got in my hand are actually the reverse fans so these will be our intake fans in the case that'll be on the side um but they look like they'll be exhausting because the grills are in the back so it's nice that they do this that way you don't have to look at any of those fan grills at all for um inside your case it's just all clean all clean look whether you've got them intake or exhaust. Yeah, they've. I'm. I'm definitely a, a big fan of the the Fantex look and and the design. Mm -hmm. So yeah, NV5 is also a very very beautiful looking chassis. It is. And I will. You know what else is beautiful? This chat because I'm seeing so many people that we have known who've always been around, but we've got so many new faces today. I'm so excited. Welcome to our show. Uh, we do this show every Tuesday and Thursday, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific. We do it Thursday here on Twitch, Tuesday on the green. And uh, we are, you know, it's CLX Gaming over there, so it's Gaming TV here. Definitely ch come by, see, see what's up. And you'll get to see what's coming up for next month's giveaway soon, but not today. Uh, one of the cool things about this is that unlike the NV7, the NV5 has a shroud that is actually lowered. It's on the lower side of that. Uh, what was your thought when you first saw that easy so it's it's really interesting because when we we partnered up for the launch of the nv7 with fantex um and we saw it we saw it at ces we saw it at ces and we thought that the nv7 was beautiful um it's a very unique take on the the dual chamber design that kind of you know the o11 kind of made popular yeah. um but they kind of created that i don't know uh that floating uh design where it doesn't have a pillar there the two pieces yeah. of glass kind of meet um and we thought that was really cool but the nv7 was big like you know we know that that there are people that have you know limited space so yeah the first thing that we asked was you know this is awesome we love it obviously we want a partner let's get it let's let's go live with it but i think i almost remember that the first words out of my mouth were, can it be smaller? And that's when we saw the first renders for the NV5. Yep. And I said, oh, NV7 is awesome. We'll launch the NV7. We're going to go live. It's going to be great. It's going to be our raw. But I think the NV5 is really going to be the the one that moves it. So, yeah, I mean, I think the NV5 pretty much nails, nails you know, uh, ticks every box. Yeah, so. ab absolutely agree. I know we've got, I've seen some comments rolling through about uh, the white builds and how they look. One of the things that I love about the white builds is that, if, especially if it's a white interior, your lights literally light up your entire case. I'm gonna use mine for example, like that whole thing is just blue inside. It can be red inside, it can be whatever color I want inside. And it all reflects off of there. And that's one of the cool things about this. Plus these D30s are wonderful. <laughs> They are very yeah. light emitting. They are great. Yeah, if you want to do, if you want, if you want to create, um, I guess it, it, it depends on the ambiance of like your setup, right? If you want something that kind of lights up and and the whole case is the the show, then white is definitely the way to do it. If you want to do something a little bit more subtle where it's color in select places, you can do that very well with black, right? So black will give you like you see the fans and just the fans light up, right? Yeah. Where once you light up anything inside of the white case, it glows. You get a more of a glowing effect Yeah. with the white. Yep. 
Agreed. Now, one cool thing about the white that we can see, uh, this white build, we can see if the boy's pulling out. We've used this before, and it's this, it's a, it's hands down an incredible uh, power supply, you know, but this is also by Fantex. This is a Fantex mm -hmm. Amp 1000 watt 80 plus gold. It is a modular, which we'll get into that here in a little bit to talk about the differences of those. But the great thing about this is it comes with white cables. Yes. Paul. Mm hmm. Well, how is that? In fact, while we've got it sitting there, let's talk a little bit about this and what makes it different from other power supplies. Yeah, so this is, like you mentioned, the 1000 watt amp. This is 80 plus gold and modular. This does come in black if you have a black build, but you want this power supply. Um, but yeah, the, what I really like is these cables are also white, even the connectors at the end. So we don't always see that um, with other power supplies. And it's just nice to have. It almost looks like you have a braided kit without having to have one. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, I've got white cables in mine, and it totally makes a visible difference. Mm -hmm. It's it's great. Now, one of the cool things about the theme about the themology of the way that they have put this case together is you've got the white rubber grommets, which really blend in. They're actually visible from this angle, but they blend in so well you just don't ever notice they're there. Plus, Fantex has their signature Velcro ties to really help organize that cable management. Paul. Uh, how have those come in handy for you and the, uh, and the build team when you're putting things together? Yeah, so these Velcro ties are pretty much standard across any Fantex case, so um, we, we're pretty familiar with them. And what we do here still is we still use zip ties for our uh, tie-ups because we think it just, it, the clean look you get from them is just kind of unmatched. But what these straps allow us to do is section off our cable management. So it's already zip tied together, but then we can organize it with these and hold them down. And it just, it's just, it's the icing on the cake for the tie up really. Yeah, it's. And there is some on the back of the actually, case as well. So um, the NV7 being the, the taller version with the door on the back. I'm gonna rotate this real quick, Hayden. Mm -hmm. So this has Velcro straps on the back. Um, so you can organize even your keyboard cables, your monitor cables, HDMI, all that good stuff. So nice that they added those on the back. Yeah. The fact those are on the that was one of the things that just blew my mind when I saw those on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's interesting how they kept the design of the or the the design concept of the NV7 with the door, mm -hmm. yeah. and they obviously didn't put it in the NV5, but they kept it with the straps. Right, it's still the same idea of cable organization in the back of the of the chassis. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I one of the things that I that I'm you know. I'll date myself on this, but I always find impressive is that is very small for a thousand watt, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. It's very small for a thousand watts. <laughs> that is that is tiny for a thousand watt uh, power supply. Um, I remember them being significantly larger for a thousand watt power supplies, and you were always dealing with the fact that even though you had black cables at the ends, you'd get the yellow, green, blue, like. And I was yep. like, why can't they just give me all black cables or all white cables or all whatever color? And it's it's awesome that, you know, Fantex kind of, uh, they get that. Yeah, like even yeah. these USB cables that's for a cool. case. I mean, the, the actual plastic part is white and same with the 3.0. Like, you know, that's stuff that I haven't yeah. seen on any other case, honestly, for your actual case cables to be um, white as well at the end. Yeah, it's it's awesome, man. Like the the attention to to detail, which if anybody's ever put together a custom PC, you can order all the parts, and until you have it all put together, the tiny things don't start to show up to, for lack of a better term, bug you. And it's those yeah. kind of things, right? Like, oh man, if this cable would have just been all black, or if this cable would have been all white, or you know, mm -hmm. but but the fact that the case and all the major cables are already all white, it's just one less thing for you to think about. Yeah, they've done a great job with it. Uh, speaking of things that require a great job, uh, as much as we have to do some very precision work on this case, you also have to do some precision flying in Star Citizen. And I want to talk a little bit about when you mentioned racing earlier. Now, there's two yeah. different types of racing that actually happen in Star yeah. Citizen. Uh, what are they and where are they? So there's... You have you definitely have two different types of I guess racing. You have uh, ground based racing, so you have because uh, you do have your your ground vehicles. Um, so our partners at Atmo, which uh, have been you know uh, great, they kind of do the Daymar Rally. It's a 
basically 24 hour long uh race it's very similar to the dakar rally um as you've already learned dj a planet is roughly the size of a planet in yeah. that game it's very real <laughs> you're not gonna just you you can't cover or traverse massive amounts of distance in very short time right if you're on a ground vehicle and you say I'm going to go from point A and point B is miles away. It is going to feel like miles. Yeah. Um, so they run these events, which require an entire group of people to do it, both from Atmos' side and organizing it and the teams that are involved, right? You have the racer themselves plus their support crew that has to help them with, um, you know, making sure that the racer doesn't die of dehydration. Right. Um, because some of these races are very long. Um, also making sure that, you know, they have a replacement ship if the ship, for example, happens to blow up. Um, so they do that. So that's the ground based stuff. And then you have the, you know, you have to be an ace pilot, ace racer flying stuff. Yeah. Where to be at the top of your game, you have to understand and understand, you know, vector, um, inertia, understand that you have to drift in decoupled, you know, and your momentum's going to carry you through the corner. Yeah. If you see some of these guys, the top racers, it looks like they're taking they're taking all the corners blind, right? Dude, it's, um, it's ridiculous. I'm always yeah. just like, how much have they practiced this track to know this it, each time? It's yeah, it's you see them prepping for if they're really yeah. going at food, they're already aligning the next turn, and they're halfway down the straightaway, for example, and they're already doing you know course correction. They're basically yeah. starting to already change the vector of the ship before it enters the corner because they want to carry that momentum in and then adjust right as they're coming into the corner. It's very different than like apex cornering in ground-based vehicles, right? So yeah. it's pretty cool. A lot of uh, a lot of physics comes into play. So I think it's really cool. And if anybody's really interested, that's a, a really great way to practice your flying. I do it all the time before I go into like actual combat. I spend a couple of times and I do some racetracks just to kind of warm up. Now, uh, when you mentioned, you know, you'll want your drivers to dehydrate and what you have to understand people is that this game is very realistic in its sense of you get tired, you need to eat food, you need to drink water. Um, you know, if you go too fast or get too hard of G, G force going, you black out. Yeah. Like, which blew my mind the first time that happened. Yeah. Yeah, you can uh, you can definitely you can black out and you can red out. You can do both. Um, oh, geez. So yeah, G forces are a real thing in the game. So I think that part's also is also really cool. And they've gone as far as also making sure it's not just the pilot. If you're a gunner in the ship or you're just in the ship, if you're not careful, you can black out the crew. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's so. Yes. Actually, you can. It's that's. Hilarious did you awful. guys do a bunker raid? I saw someone asking. Yeah, we did. We've yeah. done. Uh -huh. I think we did a bunker raid. We took DJ on a bunker raid as well. Um, we did. Uh, we did bunker raids. We did. Uh, we did. I think some salvage missions. I think you did a couple of those where yeah. you were moving a bunch of. You moved a bunch of boxes and a bunch of different loot. Um, what else did we do? I know. I do remember you jumping from from ma major city to major city. So you were kind of just figuring out all the cities. I remember you doing that part. Yeah. What's yep. your favorite city, by the way? Did you do you have a favorite um, one already? I love New Babbage, but <laughs> it but is awesome. It, it, New Babbage is cool, um, but there are. I mean, there's the. I don't even know how to describe it without using some extreme language. There is that trash pit that you took me to in that asteroid, <laughs> which is really cool, but it's also the most ghetto thing I have ever Area seen 18. in my life. <laughs> Area 18 is probably like, Area, what is happening? <laughs> Why yeah. is this a thing? Area 18's got oh character, man. I like Area yeah. 18. It's got a lot of character. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, but it's, it's, it's wild to get in there. Yeah. Because you've really got to pay attention, especially if I'm in a big constellation. I had to really focus on not bumping stuff trying to get in there. Oh, you're talking about, no, you're talking about, that's my favorite, but that's not, that's not really a major city. You're talking about Grim Hex. Grim Hex, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, you're talking and about Grim one of the Hex. Sketchy, that's a sketchy place, and I love it. Yeah, <laughs> Grim Hex is, that's, that's my favorite, man. That's, that's, that's home. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, out of the major cities, I think, or. 
a city in the clouds, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, there's and there's so many places to to explore. There's so many places to go. It's it's just wild. And of course, I put the link in there for everybody if you'd like to know more. It's Robert's Space industries.com uh it's it's a lot of fun i'm if it, by the way if you have any questions in here for us let us know uh, uh either way because we would love to help out with all of that <laughs> shad says need a high-tech headset to concuss me if i get too many g's in game <laughs> <laughs> i mean you could but that could be dangerous you missed my zombies yeah i know um uh, well, I mean, it's no longer... I mean, I can turn them back on if you guys really, really want. I don't know if Toons has seen them. What, uh, you had a zombie background zombie. for Halloween? I, for Halloween, yeah. Nice. I It was... Where to go? Halloween. Boop. And then I'll just let this play for a second. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do remember seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fun. Uh, but we're going to turn that off because it's no longer Is Halloween. Is water People. cooling needed if I don't plan to overclock? Um, no, water cooling's just mm -hmm. become pretty much the standard now. Um, since you can do it kind of like uh, AIOs. Uh, Paul, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> depending on what processor you get, you know, if it, if it most likely comes with a with an air cooler, like a fan in the box, it's obviously fine to use that. But the, with AIOs being so affordable now and easy to install, I mean, I definitely recommend going with one of those. Just kind of increase the longevity of your processor and just, you know, be able to cool it better. We also have Chico727. What's up? How are you? Yes, we need a fan club for CLX. Agreed. Young Sweezy asks, have you all ever thought about rack-mounted cases? Uh, I believe at one point we definitely carried them prior to CLX. Paul, if I'm not mistaken, we definitely had them mm -hmm. before. Yeah, we, it's something we've uh, had before. I don't feel um, like there's much use for one in like a gaming environment, but you know, it is a thing. Yeah. So maybe it's a thing that we'll bring back if there's enough demand for it. We do know that it is a very niche um, space. So definitely is something that CLX could look into. But I think right now our big focus is definitely more towards providing, you know, high quality high performance, good looking computers and making them as, you know, as affordable as possible. Um, that's why, you know, you have things like our CLX set, which you can find at, you know, Amazon, Best Buy, every, you know, big box store. And then, you know, if you want something a little bit more custom, you can always come to, to our website and, and, you know, at that point you can throw anything you want at it or as little as you want at it and pick from, you know, our raw, our horse or our scarab. Uh, Shad mentions that what you guys don't use fan uh, use domes with fans to cool your pcs i mean i definitely feel like there's one in my streaming pc periodically um <laughs> another question coming in from blink what up blink how are you we built actually your uh build on on stream so once the gpu is installed how many more pci slots will still be available i'm having an issue with my case being unable to install a third card yeah, so, so from, oh, that's no. interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Um, so on this one, it kind of depends on your motherboard layout. But for this specific build, we're using a two slot card. That's probably about a two and a half slot with the way the fans stick out a little bit. Um, but with the layout, we, we will have our two PCIe by one uh, slots open up. So I'll just kind of throw this in while we're at this shot to give you guys an idea. So this card's going to sit in obviously our top slot there. Um, try to get my hand out of the way. And then you can see these two PCIe by ones right under it that we'll have open. So if this was a giant card, it might be covering that PCIe by one, but with the size of this card, they're both gonna be available. Yeah. I think I think with the the decline or not even decline, with kind of SLI and crossfire not being a thing anymore, um, not being really supported by NVIDIA or AMD at a consumer yeah. level. You've really not seen motherboards that have come out with um, tons of PCI, uh, I guess, PCIe lanes or or or, con or connectors. Um, and that has a lot to do with also why cases have become a lot smaller. Uh, you still find them on the uh, server side or workstation side because they're still NV Connect and, and a couple of other things there that are used more for like Quadro cards. Um, uh, but 
I'm assuming that whoever mentioned that probably have either. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably like an older, older chipset. So that probably is why you have the extra, the extra ones. Oh my God! Star Citizen is in the house. What's up? Welcome. Yo. Hello. What up, we've CIG? got Star Citizen officially here. We've been uh, we've been talking all about you. We've also been talking about to whether or not we when when we're thinking about announcing that winner. Um, when do you think we should announce that winner, people? Yeah, we've been talking about it, Star Citizen. I'm so glad to get get everything back in. Uh, it, it was Horror Month. Also, that that uh, base was really cool. The ship they did for for Halloween. Oh, yeah. yeah, this this is this is the this is the one right here that I'm waiting for my wallpaper. That's, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for right there. That's gorgeous. When that All one right, comes out, that's going to be my new pirate ship. All right, chat. We have 10 minutes in 10 minutes. We are going to announce the winner of that incredible uh, spooktacular PC brought to you by CLX Gaming and of course in partnership with our friends at Beacon. Look at that thing. Designed by... I feel like we should just let Kyle go ham and just make something random for cases every month because this I thing is gorgeous. That is that is probably one of the, the best designs that we've done. I think uh, yeah. the whole team kind of kind of nailed that. Uh, uh, Kyle and Nicole really had an idea and they, they really ran with it on that one. So it's so shout good. out to them. Oh, see, and Nicole, so Nicole was also involved. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, uh, it was, uh, they, they went back and forth a lot on, on the design of that one. Obviously you can see Kyle's art is amazing. Um, yeah, but they were, they were, they really wanted to do something special for Halloween. Um, since I'm almost positive is both their favorite holiday so <laughs> they were uh really? <laughs> they wanted to do something really cool yeah it, it and also purple gorgeous. is the best color ever so everybody that's saying purple is my fave yes exodus yes. i agree Agreed. purple is the best color that's uh yeah that's that's gorgeous <laughs> all right so <laughs> we need to get out of the studio yeah, that, you... <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it back uh, to the lab yeah, and have more spooky uh occurrences happen yeah Right? Yeah. Everybody's like, we need this out of here. Weird stuff keeps happening, and we're not sure why. I'll tell you why. It's a spirited box. Because I there touched we that Ouija board um, the first day. Dude, that, <laughs> that, case, that case has personality, man. That uh, case has... Yeah. Ever since we built that thing, we just started seeing the, <laughs> the most odd things started happening. And mics dropping, the lights flickering, all that good stuff. Yeah. And he, we're, they're not kidding people they're not kidding like the lights in the studio went out the other day just randomly as we went to break just, yeah, it was, just random things it was yeah. uh it was so it was so weird and it's funny because it starts to happen and it could have happened at any other time but everybody just looked at it and went it's the system <laughs> right yep it's doing it so and yeah you can you guys can uh and of course whoever wins this can turn it into any color they want speaking of but why, any uh, color you want so long as it's purple because it's the best color uh, there we go there we go. Uh, speaking of any color you want, one of the best things about building a PC is choosing the great piece of equipment called your GPU or your graphics processing unit. And for this build, we've got a pretty great one. This is a Radeon RX 7800 XT. Paul, what can you tell us about this card? Yeah, so like you said, it's the RX 7800 XT. This one is from ASRock, the Challenger cooler. Um, so we've got a pretty decent sized cooler on here. You can see the copper heat pipes. It's a dual fan model, um, still not super huge though, so we won't have to use an anti-sag bracket. So I really like that, um, you know, you don't got to worry about damaging or anything. For our power connectors, uh, we've got two 8-pin um, right here, so I like that. Very easy to use. This power supply comes with those cables. 16-gigabyte um, card, really just a solid performing card, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, we got to see a lot of, um, so we, that though, this build, um, I, I, I think we mentioned it in the beginning. Um, this is the build that powered uh, CitizenCon. We were um, we we're very happy to see extremely high frame rates. Uh, for those that don't know, the game is a very high fidelity game. Um, oh God, yeah. It's oh it, God. The, yeah. the graphics in in Star Citizen <clears throat> are amazing. You know, huge shout out to to CIG RSI. You know, the work that they've done to to make that game not only feel so so polished even though it's technically a game that's still in development but to yep. work so well um 
and to be able to use something like a 7800 you know xt and you know 7800 uh x3d and 7900 um x3ds to power both the atmo esports um stations when they were doing the the combat the fight or flight combat and pyro right which was the first time that anybody got to play the new solar system um and it ran amazing we were seeing you know some the lows were in the low like 70s and sometimes we saw frame rates that were high as you know as high as 120 um and this is on on you know gear that for the most part isn't all that extreme right 7800 x3d 7800 xt that's not that extreme um so it just goes to show that you know one the hardware is extremely good but you know cig and rsi have done a great job with you know the code that's running the game and how well it runs mind you the game still doesn't have um dlss or fsr in any yeah. form of way yep in in the game at all so it's only going to get better right so yeah absolutely agree there we go get that taken care of now as we're getting these cables all pulled through you can see where the cable management is so important because it provides a nice organization and helps with uh with airflow and cooling so how helpful is it to have your cable management properly taken care of i say this knowing that everybody's itching when i say cable management <laughs> uh how, how important is it that this be handled in such a correct way when it comes to the efficiency of the of the pc in general yeah so really the biggest thing with cable management for me is just the overall look now we could get into um air obstruction and, and all that all that stuff for our for our uh, main case fans and not having your cables out everywhere but m me personally i just really like the professional look of a good tie up all your cables are managed nicely if you ever have to get back here and troubleshoot anything it's very easy to find the cable that you know you want to unplug or or check out so really it's, it's a few of those things but for me it's the overall aesthetic and just the ease of troubleshooting if you need to i would definitely agree with paul mm -hmm. having a cleaner look if it's not clean it's you know bugs me mm -hmm. but. yeah it's a uh, it's a uh, I'm, I'm with Hayden that's that's a, that's the problem that I that I run into I can yeah I can build the computer and then the second that I look at the back I don't care if everything's plugged in and it can run if I if I can't stand to look at the back of it then right. I'm just gonna spend the rest of the the rest of the time on there um I think and with time you just get better at it though I know that I know that's for for me it was my my biggest my biggest problem yeah, it's a, it was, it's a big obstacle for me because I was just like, what? There's so much to do. But I do like the way that, that Hayden has managed to find, like, I would say, likewise bundles and then taking those bundles once they're zip tied into their own second, you know, separate group and using those Velcro ties to really hold Cable. that in and pull that back. Cable uh, management think, is more spooky than the Ouija board? 100%. 100%. <laughs> yes. Yes. Especially Agreed. if you're bad at it. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but you know what's even more fun is the fact that we are, I think we hit that 10 minute mark. Get the store on How are we hey, feeling about what up, this, Zylo? people? Zylo's in the house. Welcome. All right. So you've all been waiting for it. Is this it month's amazing, amazing, spooktacular PC is going to none other than Ms. Noxie. Miss Noxie, you are the winner. MS Noxie on Twitter. MS Noxie here on Twitch. Hope you're in the chat. Congratulations. You have won yourself this amazing PC, including the design flashette and a special group, a special gift bundle from Beacon. To find out more, go to B-E-A-C-N. That's beacon.com. That is a Beacon Mix Trade and a Beacon mic. If you'd like to know how good those mics are, easy. Give us some deep, deep tones. So this is the mic right here, guys. How do you guys like that? It's nice and clear, crisp. Yeah, it sounds absolutely uh, amazing. So there we go. We're, is uh, Miss Noxie here? here? I don't, is Miss Noxie here? I don't know. I, th I thought I saw Miss Noxie's name earlier, but I could be completely wrong. Um, <clears throat> Miss Noxie, I'm gonna go, let me just see if I can tag her. No, she's not in here, but that is the name. Uh, Miss Noxie has 24 hours to claim the prize. If that doesn't happen, then we, of course, will be redrawing. And we'll do that on 
Tuesday if that happens. So, uh, but yeah, not in the chat. However, super congrats, absolutely great. And because there's so many of you who have loved this, we wanna make sure that you understand if you would like to build a PC with CLX Gaming, in that case, all you have to do is contact customer service. Yep. And and you can get that set up because it, the, the response has just been wild over here. It's just been wild. Yeah, we have we've, how many definitely, we've definitely seen uh we've gotten a lot of requests for the design. Um it's something I mean, that's that, what I want uh, for my streaming you know, PC. <laughs> yeah, it's it's no better place to kind of I guess bring it up than than in the chat, kind of gauge everyone's idea. We're definitely looking at coming up with more um designs that are going to be limited edition runs that only run during certain times of the year so this oh, wow. is kind wow, of yeah this is kind of a, a of a look at it so if you guys really do like um these kind of designs we definitely should we, we'll keep making them um so i mean i, I love it yeah well i mean look it, it, the response was awesome we're we're definitely very proud of of how this giveaway went uh obviously um we do know that there's another giveaway that's going to be happening um that won't be necessarily announced right now i won't be the one to 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 kind of let that out of the bag but um but there's going to be obviously more giveaways you guys have been uh, uh huge supporters of the brand and we're very happy that that uh that you guys are here with us throughout you know all this that we're doing just trying to grow the company grow the brand but also you know try to do something that's that's awesome for you guys and, and thank you for it so and I wanted to say, give a shout out to it's it's uh, Hate HD said I usually don't stay or follow after giveaways, but you guys do, just have done such a good job doing it. So hey, I'll be staying. Well done and congrats. Well, thank you so much. Glad to have you here. Thanks, man. Glad to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, are we able to get custom cases made? Asks Cloudy Corona. I'm gonna be honest. This is a custom case back here. So, Paul, how would one go about getting themselves a custom case if they've got, say, a brand design or logo they want to put on there? Yeah. So, if you've got something you're, um, you know, like I said, a brand or design you want on your case, you know, just reach out to us on our chat or, or call in, and we can get that taken care of for you. We'll figure out a way to do it that that works with you and in a way that we can do it for you. Hades also mentioned that your cryptic codes have been fun honestly I, it keeps my brain going every time i got to come up with a new word puzzle to uh to really see okay how am i gonna do this with a code that's given to me i have i have an absolute blast so i'm really glad that you all are enjoying those they make it a little bit more uh a little bit more intriguing <laughs> but right now we're looking at this this looks absolutely incredible what is the next step so we just got to make sure we've got everything plugged in and then we'll be slapping panels on here and be good to go. So we are almost there. All right. Well, speaking of almost there, Easy Tunes, what's the best way for people to get involved with Star Citizen if they are uh, thinking of get, jumping into it? Well, definitely uh, going to robertspaceindustries.com uh setting up your account actually i believe no i believe they announced already the dates for iae which is basically free flight um if star citizen is still around they can definitely uh tell me if i'm right or wrong on that but um iae is definitely the best time for for new players to get involved um they have certain days for certain ship manufacturers and you basically have access to one jump in for free. You don't have to to uh, um, you just create an account and you kind of get into the game for free and you have access to all the ships from that manufacturer for uh, a limited amount of time. Right. During I and basically it allows you to to fly, you know, whatever ship manufacturer you're kind of interested in or try different ships out. Um, yeah. You'll get an idea if you like cargo ships, if you like fighters, if you like um, you know uh what else uh you have mining ships you have uh salvage ships so it'll 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 give you some options to try out without having to you know fully just take the the deep dive the plunge yeah yep <clears throat> i uh, i've it's it does now granted it does take a little bit to kind of figure out once you get used to it i'm i'm still learning it and i have to get into it periodically just so i can make sure i don't forget my controls but yeah there's some just wicked ship designs uh there's the one that i remember mentioning to you easy that the the fighter ship with the it's like a star 
Um, oh, the uh, the car to wall. Yeah, the car to wall. My yeah. God, it's well. It reminds me of those ships from the very first, the very first Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, that yeah. made the start, made the force field. You know that. Yeah. The, so the, they all linked up. Yeah, the car to wall is um, the car to wall is part of like the the alien ships. So um, definitely a cool ship. Uh, love the concept. Love the idea of it. Um, it's supposed to be very very shifty, right? Kind of just like can move very quickly side to side. Um, uh, it was a, it's a cool ship, man. I, I love the idea. I mean, one of my favorite fighters is still the Talon. So uh, God, I think yeah. it's a great looking it's a great looking ship. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think definitely it's a game that uh, you guys should give it a shot if you haven't. Um, there's a lot to learn. There is a learning curve, uh, but there is more than enough content to keep you entertained for months of years uh yeah. and now they just they're, they've announced obviously pyro so that's a whole another solar system to explore yeah but it's, that'll be so exciting to feature especially on stream um i know that i'll definitely be streaming more of it now that Dude, Halloween it's is beautiful over. cj it's gorgeous it? oh my god i really want to get into it i really want to get it <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. Uh, Trini Gamer Shack say, asks a question, which is a good question. Uh, new to PC building, I was told by someone that most people don't need anything above a 750 watt uh, PSU. Is that true, boys? Uh, it just depends on your build, but 750 watt will pretty much cover everything. I mean, if you're going high end like i7, i9 with a high end or uh, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, um, or any high end GPU, you know, you're probably gonna wanna go up to a thousand watt, but pretty much any mid tier can be covered by a 750 watt. Yep. I'm still using my 850. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, I, I absolutely, like, I know my, I went overboard because I wasn't sure what else I might need to plug into this thing. So I got a 1300 watt, which definitely was a little overkill, but it also future proofed what we had in mind. So, yas. All right. So now it is the moment of truth. Let's find out what it looks like. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. And of course, one of my favorite features in this case is the shroud actually lights up. Whoa, let's go. That looks good, dude. That looks great. Zen V5s, the, again, just those so lights, clean. God, those lights are amazing. Dude, just, I, lo I love the look of the Envy 5. When we had these, when we had these at Citizen so Con, it, they looked amazing, man. Oh my goodness. So let's go back through once again what's inside this amazing machine. This is an is an Earth NV5 build by Fantex. This has an AMD Ryzen 9 7900X processor mounted on an ASRock X670E Pro RS motherboard with 32 gigs of DDR5 5200 RGB RAM by XPG. It's also got a Radeon RX 7800 XT 16 gig graphics card. The operating system is being mounted on an ADATA 1 terabyte 700 Gold M.2 to SSD NVMe, and of course, your process is gonna be cooled by that brilliant Fantex Glacier 1 D3360 AIO, along with eight other Fantex D30s fans, and it's all being powered by a Fantex Amp 1000 watt 80 plus gold modular white power supply. So, uh, great build, guys. Congratulations. And, of course, thank you, Easy, for, for popping in here and talking with us uh, and especially giving us some updates and things. I'm looking forward to seeing the video that we're going to be happening, happening uh, in the next show or two from CitizenCon, yep. which will be really, really fun. I'm excited. Um, yeah, no, man. It's uh, it's always awesome to, to come on the show and uh, and interact with you guys and, and you know, talk to the, the viewers and, and the fans. Um, obviously, we have a lot more coming up. Uh, always stay tuned with everything that we've got going on on the different social media channels. I know DJ and the guys are constantly, you know, mentioning it. Um, yeah, we've got, you know, this is this is not it for CLX. There's always a lot more that we got going on. We have our Dream Hack event that's going to be uh, obviously uh, happening in Atlanta area. Go check us out. We will have all of our systems there. I know DJ will go ahead and definitely announce it once again as we get closer to it. But just kind of want to remind you guys, you know, we love to meet you guys. You know, yeah. if you're there, you know, we'll probably most of you, most of the guys that are always on here will remember you guys. So if you're there, say who you are. You know, Ivory, Nicole, um, hopefully Paul or Hayden will be there. DJ will be there and some of the other guys. And we can definitely talk to you guys. Um, we love to meet yeah. you guys. Um, thank you so much for, you know, being a part of the CLX family and, and, and helping us, you know, grow. And there's going to be a lot more cool things and a lot more giveaways. So. Thank you guys so much. 
Uh, thank you. So just to keep everybody in mind, this show happens twice a in two parts. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, you're going to spend the afternoon with Hayden as Hayden continues to build more cool stuff. Now, with that being said, the show happens every Tuesday and Thursday live right here on the channel. Uh, and we are doing this now across multiple different platforms. So just keep that in mind. On Tuesdays, we're on Kick. Thursdays, we're here on Twitch. And that show starts at 11 a.m. Pacific to Eastern. To find out more about all what's going on and the latest and greatest events that are happening, including future giveaways, make sure you follow us on social media. That's TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and threads at CLX Gaming. If you'd like to join our amazing community of like-minded PC enthusiasts and gamers, come on over to our Discord. It's discord.gg slash CLX Gaming. Uh, and yeah, so there we go. So with that being said, uh, I'm gonna go get ready to play some Alan Wake. Uh, so on behalf of Nicole and Kyle, who did that amazing design, and Jason in production, Paul and Hayden, along with Easy. I'm DJ Blue PDX. Don't go away. We've got more coming up after the break. We'll be right back. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, everybody. Congratulations.